What I'd like to do is just take you through the process that I've been following in order to get a V5 uh, logbook for the Massey 135. When I bought it, it had a registration number, but no logbook, no V5. It came from a, a reputable dealer, and um, well, fair enough, there was talk that maybe they'd, uh, they'd help to get one. I was, uh, I was fairly convinced I'd have to sort it out myself. There's plenty of these tractors, not just masses, all the tractors, sort of vintage tractors that don't have log books. Primarily, it's just because they've been around a long time. Some of these, you know, this is a, what, 1970 model. It's a big ask to expect that the log book will be able to uh, still be available um, sort of 50 years later. So, in order to do that, in order to get the V5, what I did was to join the Ferguson Club. Now they are excellent in providing the support that you need. The DVLA need some um, information from these clubs. It's not just a Ferguson club, sort of similar, Massey Ferguson or whether it's a Ford, if it's a Ford tractor. DVLA needs some, some backup from these clubs so I, I think it was the best move I made. I fully respect the Ferguson Club, they are excellent in, uh, in what they do. They have a, a DVLA officer, uh, or somebody who deals directly with the DVLA, who carries the information between people, between uh, applicants and the DVLA, to try to make sure that what is exchanged is the information that's, uh, that's required. I think there's a little bit of a, a blackout to getting these registered, to be honest. I wouldn't like to try to do it on my own. And, um, and the DVLA officer has been uh, absolutely excellent. So what I've done so far is I've followed through the process that the Ferguson Club have um, indicated, submitted the, the right paperwork initially to them, and uh, they've then passed that on, well, checked it, um, stamped it, and sent the information that the DVLA need through to the DVLA. And um, that was probably about three weeks ago. It only took a couple of days for the, um, the Ferguson Club officer to turn the paperwork around. But um, I think cause yeah, about three weeks ago it went in. Yesterday I had a, a, a bit of correspondence from the DVLA saying that um, they needed some additional evidence and all it was is because the, the tractor's been registered to a company rather than individual, all the information that went through to verify who I was in terms of copy of driving licence, copy of um, utility bill, didn't have the name of the company on it. So all they want is, uh, is me to send two pieces of information relating to the company and hopefully that'll be enough to um, to get it sorted. So what I've actually done with this one is that although it had a, a registration plate with it, to be able to retain the registration number was actually quite involved. It was, I think it was suggesting you'd need to go back to the local authority archives to get information from them. We're certainly doing COVID, it just isn't gonna happen. And given that I've got no great affinity for the registration number for this. It's not like, you know, Grandad had bought the tractor and um, I really wanted to, to keep the registration number, anything like that. I just thought it was better to let the registration number go and register it with a, a new registration number. So it'd probably be a, a J-Reg. And um, even the, the registration plate, it was, came out from the dealer just as a, a modern plate that was actually stuck on the top of the uh, the, the pallet fork um, lifters uh, so there was no there was nothing to be lost really by changing the registration number you just have to go back to the insurers and say that the registration number has changed so that's where we've got to um, now some of the information that the, the Ferguson Club and the DVL need can be quite tricky to find so one of the first bits of information is, that's needed is the tractor serial number, which on this one, I think like most, is down there. Now, this one, I think the panel has been painted at some stage and it really isn't very clear to be able to see exactly what that number is. 
So what this suggests is that you take a, a rubbing of the plate. But I did that, sent that in, and I, I didn't think it really added that much um, to, to the process. If you've got that and that's clear, you, you, you're well on your way. But I didn't really want to rely on that. You can make out the 135 clearly enough, so that, uh, <laughs> that was a good start. But the rest of the numbers, just a bit of a struggle. Now with any massive 135, what you've got is a whole series of numbers stamped right throughout the tractor. So things like on the axle, all sorts of part numbers that um, can throw you off the trail. But I think the, the ones that you really want, if that one isn't very clear, It's just down there. I'll just put my finger off it. But just, just under there, if you can make out um, where I'm looking, is there's, there's actually two, two numbers which are they're sort of stamped into the, into the block. And those are numbers which I think the Ferguson Club have taken and um, have put on the, on the paperwork. If you can just sort of make out where on this one I'm actually looking. That I think is the, probably the most important bit of information. But uh, another thing that I did was went underneath, somebody sort of tipped me off that if you go underneath the tractor, um, there are some numbers sort of stamped underneath the, the sump or under the engine. And so I managed to get a picture of those, sent, uh, to send that in as well. But you have got all sorts of, say, this, this information that uh, you know, there's a number down there. Um, there are numbers all over the place. I think I was saying there's something on the back axle, but I think all that is just a. There's one down there. I think it's just a red herring. I don't think that that contributes anything. But I think that one is key, and um, especially the one just underneath the throttle lever. I think that's uh, that's pretty crucial. So the paperwork itself that is the guidance document that the DBLA sort of sent out and the form that you're actually filling in is a V55 stroke 5 from the DBLA which is uh, when it, when it went to the when it went to the Ferguson Club, they wanted very little information. It needed to be signed, um, contact details, things like that. And they actually take the document, take the form, and um, add all their information. I think they go back into their records of um, serial numbers, engine numbers, and all that sort of thing, and piece together enough information to be able to say that this looks like a you know a genuine. UK Massey 135, 1970 or whatever, and, um, and they, they tick various boxes and uh, add, add their weight to the authenticity of the, of the tractor. So that is basically it, I mean the paperwork is pretty lightweight other than the fact that you have to send in um, a photograph of both sides of the tractor itself. Uh, information about yourself, your, you know, it's typically a, a copy of your driving license, utility bill, which is what I've now got to sort of top up in terms of the, the company details, and I um, see all, all the information about serial numbers, various various bits and pieces, a cheque for about, I don't know, 55 quid or something like that, it's not a big deal, and um, stamped address down or stamped envelopes, um, it's that type of information. I think that you know, there's a package of stuff there. You know, it's typically, a photograph that I sent in of the what I've just showed you at the side of the the engine, the numbers, the tractor itself, and um, and away you go. So I have actually been putting it off for quite a long time. Um, I thought I had no excuse during lockdown not to get on and do it. it. At the end of the day, what it means is with a logbook, if you come to sell it privately, it's got to be worth more. It's got to be easier to sell with a with a logbook. 
I don't think people have any expectations of, um, of a vintage tractor having one, and there's plenty, as I say, haven't. But um, if you can get one, then uh, I, I think it's got to be good. So that's the process. I'm, I think I'm nearly home and dry. I think if you do get, an, I think if I send that information off to the DVLA and then um, keep in touch with the Ferguson Club, they always want feedback. And if that goes through, hopefully uh, in the next few weeks we should have a, a new registration number and I can sort out a, a proper registration number plate. Um, so there we are. I think. I think, as I say, I think we're 98% of the way there. And to be fair, once you get your head around how to do it, and absolutely get in touch and join up with the, you know, the likes of the Ferguson Club in, in respect of uh, trying to get a registration number for a, uh, a Massey. Once you've done that, and I think at the moment the subscription is only about 20 quid. They've got great information. They've got. Um, uh, I think it's a quarterly little sort of booklet magazine that uh, usually has an article that um, talks specifically about the DBLA registration process and lessons learned and all that sort of thing and pleas for information and uh, guidance and all that sort of thing. So, and, and when you look at what the Ferguson Club actually do in terms of events and uh, exchanging information and access to parts and all that sort of thing, I, I am really impressed with it. So thank you to to them, um, and uh, I think I think I've covered everything that needs covering on this one. So unless you're here to the country, I think we are um, we're well on track. Thank you for watching the video, and if you have taken much from it and uh, can give us a like, that would be really helpful. And if you haven't already, it'd be really good if you could subscribe to the channel. So see you on the next one. Thank you.